to the Lodge Lockdown with your host, Frank Cronogue. Right. <laughs> this is live TV. Um, there we go, then. Yeah, <laughs> good. Um, we are, or this is rather, the Lodge Lockdown. Yes, another ep episode. Another fantastic addition uh, to uh, lighten up your uh, lockdown uh, blues, if you have any. Uh, and we've got some great guests today, and we're still waiting on one. He could be stuck in the black log, I don't know. But, um, uh, well, he is a woodsman. He is a woodsman, yes. Uh, but we have got someone else who's in the black log um, here, which is um, absolutely wonderful. He was in season two of Twin Peaks. He was Agent Cooper's nemesis. And it's his move today. It's none other than Kenneth Welch, a.k.a. Windham Earl himself. Ken, yeah. welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Hello there. <laughs> Scary. <laughs> Look at that eye. That okay. Right on. The other eye is just as good as well. And also, we've also got some t two young, uh, younger members of the, uh, uh, the uh, Twin Peaks world from season three. Happy to have them here. It's none other than Jake Wardle and Zoe McLean. How are you both? Hi. Thanks. <laughs> Hello. How are you? Good to see you. You too, mate. Right. Okay. Yeah. We've got lo we've got lots to get through here. So let's um let's tell you what's coming up on the show. Um, two main topics tonight. Uh, one is a biggie, a big one. Is there intelligent life in the universe? Mm. Um, probably more intelligent than down here sometimes, you know, <laughs> with, the, so. with the things that we do to one another, in this, <laughs> <laughs> humans do. Um, and also, if money was no object, uh, what would you buy? Obviously, Ken is a multimillionaire, so he might not be able to answer that question. Uh, uh, how did you um, know that, Frank? I, I, I'm sorry, I wasn't meant to spill the beans about that. Oh, <laughs> good Lord, man. It just came out. Sorry about that, yeah. Um, and we'll well, I'm getting, I'm getting a new room on, on my house, so most guests. of that's gone now. <laughs> uh, yeah. Right. There will be five random questions to one of my guests, but the question is, at this point, who will it be? And I'll be reading out, um, is that a fact which will um, obviously blow your minds with, with um, fantastic uh, um, stuff, to put it mildly. So All first... Right. We'll wait on Stu uh, our friend Stuart, if he makes it. Um, let's get going with the first topic, which is, if money was no object, what would you buy? Ken, what do you think? I'd buy all the money, and then I would operate on a barter system around the entire world so that money would no longer be in existence, so that 3% of the world would have all the money and the rest would have nothing. This way, there'd be no money, Everyone have to barter. That would be sort of like a socialist uh, point of view, where everyone offers what they do, like from each according to his need, to each according to his, from each according to his ability, to each according to his need. So then you would just barter. Everyone could offer what they could offer, and that would off uh, create a much more friendly social situation rather than, you know, three percent of the trillionaires running the world. Do you understand that? There we go. That's my whole theory. Bye. Thanks. <laughs> Anybody understand what I just said? Yeah, I uh, <laughs> kind of did, I got the gist but I might have to get you to interpret it backwards for me as well. Um, I'd buy all the money in the world, and there would be no more money to the barter system. <laughs> it's not like Bitcoin, is it? You're talking about um, no. no, everything, anything that has to do with money would be gone. Ah, yeah, actually, that might well happen in a utopian world. Um, well, let's hope so. Can I just say? <laughs> You'd have to trade me something, Frank, for what you can offer me, and I would offer you something in return. I don't know. I'd cut your grass, plant a few flowers, and you'd feed me. You know what I mean? It's that kind of thing. Barter. I, I got you. I understand completely. You know, yeah. like, they, like they did in the old days. That's what they used you to do. You fix trade my car, I give you a Shakespeare soliloquy. You know, it's only fair. Yeah. I like that idea. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. What do you think, Zoe? What would you do? Oh, goodness. I mean, of course, there's the selfish answer of like, you know, buy all these clothes and buy a big mansion. But 
I feel like you should also do good if you had, you know, an endless amount of money. So, you know, I want to help my family. I want to, you know, give money back to my parents for all the things that they've done for me. I'd want to help my grandma and I'd want to help animals, you know, donate to different charities. But it'd also be cool to have like a really big house with like a bowling alley and a movie theater and all that fun, cool stuff. <laughs> Pretty much. That would be, that would be a uh, 10 bit, would it? Yeah. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Jake? Pretty much the same, really, in, in terms of... Oh, oh, someone's... Stuart's here. Hey! <laughs> good timing, actually, because he's still... He hasn't missed anything, so that's actually still in the same the first bit, so that's good. We're on the first subject. <laughs> hey, Is Stuart. He you need to turn your audio on. You there, Stu? It says that you're muted. Hey, how about now? Oh, there we go. Oh, yeah. Loud and clear. Uh -huh. Okay. Hey, man. Good to see you again. Yeah. Oh, your that. face has vanished. Got involved. Half your head chopped off, Stu. Right in front and, of uh, Yeah. Try um, tilting your camera up a bit, if, if you can. Tilt it up? Yeah, let's yeah. Basically, my monitor. That's it. There you go. There we go. That's it. Great. I can kind of sit away from the mic a little bit. <laughs> quite, a, <laughs> quite a studio you've got there. My goodness. What are you doing there? What's that? What do you do in your studio most of the time? You have a huge microphone. You got a little studio. Yeah, I do a lot of music. I've been wow. doing a lot of music and some great. voiceover. So this is great. A great uh, mic Excellent. for everything. What kind of what kind of music do you do? Do you have anything that you... Yeah, pop, do? rock. The uh, last thing I recorded was actually straight-up country song. Cool. Uh, Western, but primarily rock and blues. And So you play what? Uh, guitar, piano, and you kind I of... Play primarily everything. guitar, but for the sake of recording, I play bass as well. So I've got huh? a jazz bass, a few guitars. Very good. Uh, a MIDI keyboard, you know, mm -hmm. so I can add keyboards. I'm not much of a keyboard player, so I usually uh, yeah. just add a pad or something like that. Yeah. Well, uh, and then I vocalize, you know, so I've been singing as well. What a great thing to do during these days, eh? Oh, yeah, it's kept me kept me alive, kept me going. Yeah. <laughs> Good. It's a real yeah. pleasure to meet you, by the way. Hey, hi. <laughs> I, just, I just saw you on something that's very current, that was very good. I wonder what that would be. You'd almost have that, to. Uh, um, would that have been uh, um, what's the number? What's the number something? I don't what know. Series you did? Something on HBO Max or? I don't know. The last thing I did, you might have seen, was I did a little bit on Star Trek. No. Uh, oh, wait a minute. Okay. How about the Expanse. Well, that was quite a while ago. That was really, that was good. That was a while ago. Yeah. Okay, well, I just saw it for the first time recently. Okay. Okay. Yeah, a great cast in that show. Goodness. I can't remember who, who was in it. Uh, well, let's see. Um, let's yeah. That, uh, um, who was the young lady that played my granddaughter? Um, hmm. Yeah. Jared Harris was in it. Uh, at least, you know, he had an arc, I suppose. But the star was... Uh, Thomas, Thomas Jane, or at least he was one of the leads. Okay. I don't think I met him. Uh, he wasn't on that episode. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, no, that was very good. That was really good. I enjoyed that. Sorts or something like that. In fact, I just worked for the same producer uh, last, well, last week and a month ago on something called Charmed. Okay. Yeah. Did a couple episodes on that. Well, nice. Where are you now? I see you're outdoors. I'm up near, uh, not far from where I live. My friend Andy Malcolm is one of the most world famous Foley artists, and this is his property. I live just down the road here. Fantastic. And I'm about an hour north of Toronto, northeast. Oh, great. All right. So it's lovely up here. Country, you know, country life. Really nice. Sure looks like it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There you go. See? Yeah. 
He's in the open there. He's in the open. Oh, yeah. Very lovely. Very nice. here. So sorry if you were in the middle of a conversation. I, I spaced. I got talking to a neighbor who I've never met before. <laughs> we probably got lost in the vortex, dear, for a minute. That's why I was getting a bit concerned, you know. Yeah. Uh, but we we hadn't really gone too far into it, funny enough. We were only on the first topic, so you haven't really missed anything. Which okay, is good. Terrific. Um, so we're only just on that, so. It's great to see the Stuart Strauss, uh, by the way. I, I don't think I introduced you properly, Stuart, but there you are. Thank you. Um, um, now, so where, where did we get up to, guys? Um, was I asking Jake? That, was yeah, that, where about I the, um, the first topic. About the money. Yeah, what would you do with yeah, all money that money? Money with no object, what would you yeah. buy? I think Jake was well, it, doing well, that, and then we can go to the interview after that. Um, I mean, it obviously kind of similar to what Zoe was saying. It's... Um, there's different uh, layers to that to that question. Obviously, there's the the selfish answer, and then there's the selfless answer. And it also does depend on by no object. Does that mean infinite, unlimited, or you know x amount? Is so it's a you know can be a complicated question to answer. But if it, if we're just saying infinite, then I think uh, just eliminate all debt from from the planet. Just so everyone can be back on an even level. So that's you know, an absolutist thing. Um, more realistically, yeah, help out charities and everything. And on a selfish level for me, uh, I'd like to buy some video game studios and get them to make some games that I wanted them to make that have been discontinued. Some some of my favourite video game series, like the Killzone series, for example, and um, some other ones. Um, yeah. And also, uh, I probably have my own collection of um, historical uniforms military uniforms because i like military history so i'll probably have my own little private museum so yeah in in a, in a nutshell <laughs> <laughs> that sounds good how about you Stu? the question is if money is no object what what i yeah, do yeah what would you buy yeah what would i buy well first mm -hmm. probably pay for all the things that i'm using now <laughs> 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 Uh, maybe a publishing company. That's kind of a mystery to me right now. Yeah. So that would be something. Um, beyond that, you know, whatever financial security you can you can get. I'd I'd it'd be nice to not owe on things. You know, not be worrying about next month's payments so much. So yeah. That would probably be what I would do. You know, and then, you know, definitely. You know, help help save the world as as well if money is no object. You know, yeah, or at that's least good. Get to some worthy causes. You know, things I believe in. Absolutely, yeah, I agree. Um, I think what I do is um, apart from doing the obvious things, just to look after um, close family, make sure they they've got no debt anymore or anything like that. I'd make sure I cleared all those debts for them and everything and make sure they were comfortable. The few a circle of close friends with I would um, help them out as well and things like that and um, give away give money probably anonymously but very, very generously to charities that I I, have, I feel passionate about. You know, I do that. I wouldn't make a song and dance about it. I just do it very you know quietly. Um, and um but for personally though getting back to music um Stu, for a minute i would love to have um my own recording studio mm. um i've had a dream of, of for years and years to, to, to have that you know um, somewhere in the country in england maybe somewhere like an old stable block um have it all fitted out into a studio um have bands come and visit and stay there. There'd be a farm there and there'd be recreational things and they could actually stay for a week or so and record their album and enjoy the countryside as well. All the amenities would be there. I'd have like outbuildings, you know. That's something I really want to do. Yeah. You know, that just interject, that's how a lot of records were done in the 70s. I mean, from the Stones yeah. to Chicago to you name it. Um, you know, Colorado became a real hotbed you know, a ranch there that Chicago's producer had bought or owned. I think Elton John, 
recorded there as well. Possibly yeah. Honky Chateau was recorded there. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, the Stones and other groups, I think even Led Zeppelin that did record in like these older mansions or farms in your part of the world. You know, so, yeah, that'd be a great thing. And I'd love to have a studio as well. So oh, it'd be fantastic. I'd, ha I'd have to. I I'd actually would um, personally hire a good engineer. Yeah. To, to work it for me because I wouldn't have to know how with a huge rig like that, you know, like a proper, yeah. you know, 24, 64 track, whoever yeah. it is, you know. Great engineers um, in your part of the world, starting with Eddie Kramer and so many more. Oh, yeah, there's some great ones. Um, you know, so I, I would, yeah, definitely do, do something like that. I'd love to do that. But there you go. That's a dream. It's a dream, Ken. Uh, so, oh, um, right now. Going on with what, one of the things you were saying, Frank, uh, about, um, sort of being anonymous, anonymously donating. It reminded me of this, there was this um, this uh, TV show on years ago, uh, it was called Secret Millionaire, and they, there would be like millionaires who would go and volunteer for charities undercover, just as going and as, as a volunteer. And then at the end, they'll decide which one they, they want to donate to, and then they'll surprise them and say, oh, by the way, you know, I really love what you do and everything, and here's like X amount. I remember that. Yeah. I saw, I've and the people were moved to tears, weren't they? Yeah. That was a very, that was an interesting twist on things, wasn't it? To do yeah. That, you know? yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there was a wrong. series on way before that called The Millionaire, which you'd go to this guy's, somebody would be summoned by chance, this man's office, Jay Beresford Tipton, his name was, and he would like anonymously, like you'd never see his face. And he would give this person like a million dollars and then the story would follow what they did with it. It was like, you know, that was back in the 50s, though, I think. It was a very good show. Yeah. Anybody remember that one? I really, it sounds familiar. That, that was had to be an enormous amount of money back in the 50s. Well, it was, yeah. It was a big, it was a lot of fun. You know, I mean, it was obviously a fiction, you know, a TV series, but, uh, you know, it was, it was fun. You guys are way too young to remember that, so I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's a little bit for, for my time, Ken. I was born in 40, 49, so I was only a year old when it was on. Oh, really? yeah. Well, yeah. you're not that you're not that much younger than me, Frank, apparently. I was born in yeah. 52, so we're all pretty close there. Well, I was born in 42, so I got you beat. Ah, okay, it should do. I just turned 79 last week. Well, happy birthday. Hey, can you play it for me? Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, let's see, a bouncy C. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right. I'm going to give you uh, is that a fact? Right. So brace yourself for this one. An amazing fact. To blow your minds. Here we go. Um, a woman who lost her wedding ring, uh, found it 16 years later on a carrot in her garden. Mm. Yeah, cool. 16 years later. So it was obviously yeah. buried, or it got buried somehow. And then... Yeah, she was in, uh, as a woman from Sweden. Uh, she lost her wedding ring while cooking at Christmas in 1995. Oh. Uh, 16 years later, whilst gardening, the woman found the ring around the carrot. Uh, one explanation is that it must have got lost in the vegetable peelings yep. that was uh, turned into compost. That's what I was thinking. That mm, makes sense. That's the logical uh, explanation. Yeah. And then one little carrot seed was planted. The, the carrot went down, found the ring grew around the ring, inside the ring, there you go, from one little tiny carrot seed. Wow. Yeah. So it was on the carrot. It wasn't beside the carrot. It was on it. It was actually on the carrot. There you go. Ah, the so the carrot grew through, grew through the, the ring. Did, the she marry, did she get married to the carrot after all or not? <laughs> that would be unusual. <laughs> That's impossible. With this carrot ivy wed, you know, oh, made her ring more valuable, <laughs> more carrots in it. You know, I'm just thinking, yeah, I wonder what how many carrots the ring was. Um, 24 ah. carrot, I don't know. <laughs> there you go. Out, out. <laughs> Did you... Brilliant. I mean, it was that was crying out for a carrot joke. Sorry about that. But, um, yeah, yeah, I guess it was. Yeah, uh, I can just imagine it's a good so thing. It's a good thing we don't, the rings good just thing we don't finding it. 
Can you imagine that, that? Gollum from Lord of the Rings just finding it and the carrot, yeah. picking up the cat and going, precious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the ring, the ring. I forgot about that. Yeah, um, it's a good now, thing. That she, the good thing she did, she didn't eat the carrot, swallow the ring, then she'd have to start all over again. <laughs> that could be painful as well. Yeah, I think well, so. Yeah, what's worse, That's a ring or a carrot? I don't know. Um, so six, 16 have... years as well. That's quite a, a 16 years time. That's quite a time for a, it's a long time for to burn. Yeah. It. How many harvests would that be? Was she? Well, my question is: Was she still married at the time, or was she divorced by then? Yeah. Oh, it doesn't say. There you go. That's been left. That's ominous. That one. Yeah. <laughs> that is a fact. I mean, you're not asking if it's fact or fiction. That is fact, correct? That is go. fact. That is fact. Okay. Yeah. That was a true story. Crazy, Absolutely. but true stories. Yeah. Perhaps she was a widow by then. That would be even sadder. Yeah. yeah, yeah, wouldn't it? I mean, uh, 16 years is a hell of a long time for a character. <laughs> I can't quite work that out. I think it's just a, a lot of harvest over, and over the, the over years, one that it probably right. just went around the soil until it finally managed to get in a carrot's way. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> get in the carrot's way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear lord. Would have been um, trouble if she'd put that in the juicer too. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Make quite a noise. So she didn't put the ring in there. But, um, <laughs> um, right. I've got now something really fascinating for you, uh, because one of you has to ask five random questions on the spot. I hope you're ready. And I'm going to pick them now with my random. Fingers, uh, so we go through like the old, you know, the old game shows. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and to answer five random questions, it's Zoe McLean. Yay! Zoe. Oh. Not me. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Zoe, are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Right. Here we go with your five random questions, starting now. Right. Do dog or cat? I'm sorry, you cut out. Can you say that again? Dog or cat? Cat. Obviously, I have a cat right next to me. Can oh, yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Do you like roller coasters? No, I don't. I am very mm. terrified of roller coasters and a lot of things in life in general, so definitely no. <laughs> <laughs> What was the last movie you watched in a theater? Well, that's going back like a year. Um, <laughs> uh, oh God, I don't, I don't know. Um, I feel like, I feel like it'd been a very, very long time since I'd gone to a theater before COVID. So I feel like it was probably, I went and watched a Miyazaki film in like May of 2019. And I think that might've actually been the last time I went to a movie. Um, it was, oh, which movie was it? Um, I don't remember what movie it was, but it was the Miyazaki like film festival that they do, well, did every year in the theaters and select theaters across the country. Uh, if you had a chance to play a superhero, which one would it be? Oh, gosh. Um... I mean, there's two ways I could answer this. I could either answer this based on, like, what's a cool superhero or, like, ba based on the power that the superhero has. So I feel like if I were to base it on a power, like, I feel like flying is really cool. So, like, being able to fly would be really fun. But if I were to base it on the actual superhero, I mean, like, <laughs> I guess Supergirl? I don't know. <laughs> but I guess she could fly, yeah. too, so that works. <laughs> that still fits. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and your final question, uh, Zoe, do you ever talk to plants? No, but I talk to my cats a lot. <laughs> well, I suppose I can give you half a point for that. Um, <laughs> um, but you have scored four and a half points out of five. All right. 
No, I'll give you five, five points, sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling generous. Well, thank you. <laughs> You've answered all of them, honestly, and, and as best to the best of your ability. Yeah. Um, and uh, so, right, guys, we've got, we're on to the last topic now, which is a biggie. This is going to be mind-boggling, I think, and I'd love to hear your insight on this. It's a question that's often asked, I suppose, in public houses and stuff like that. Um, but we're going to ask it here. Is there, in, apart from us, um, I'm talking about the out, not down here in terra firma, I'm talking about up there in the sky, in the atmosphere, is there intelligent life out there? And what could it, what would it actually look like? And um, are they advanced in this sort of technology ahead of us or are they perhaps much more primitive, perhaps? I don't know. What do you, what do you guys think about this? Well, most definitely. I'm, I'm, I strongly believe that there is intelligent life out there, given the um, sheer quantity of stars and galaxies, um, and the fact that you know the the telescopes now can uh, are finding planets orbiting almost every star. So there's got to be you know a significant number of planets that host life, and amongst those planets that host intelligent life. Um, but it's also also what you were saying about you know are they advanced more advanced than us or less than advanced than us? Well, I think it's it's a mixture. I mean, some planets they might have you know uh, uh, an intelligent species that's still in like their equivalent of the Stone Age or the Bronze Age or the Medieval Period. There may be some that are the same level as us, and there may be some that are. 10, 15 times more advanced than us. So I think it's, you know, I think that, you know, these alien civilizations are coming and going all the time in distant stars. So that's what I like to think anyway. So I love sci-fi, but I definitely think it, the probability is, is high. So, um, mm -hmm. and also, um, you know, on top of that, there could be a planet out there that once had, intelligent life and doesn't anymore say they destroyed themselves or died out or whatever and then there may be a, another planet that um doesn't have it yet but will have it one day i mean say say aliens mm. came here during you know dinosaur times they'd think oh there's there's no intelligent species here just dinosaurs and then they go off and but now look you know so i think the possibilities are endless really yeah how about the other guys? Well, I'll say with the amount of species on our planet alone, which is countless, right? Pretty much. Um, and like Jake's saying, as big as the galaxies are, there's as many stars, it would seem pretty unlikely that there isn't intelligent life somewhere else. It would seem highly likely that life and many species could very well live in you know other planets or other galaxies and then you know going back in history i mean there's still all those questions around the tombs in egypt and everywhere else that i guess reality would just say they were built by thousands if not millions of slaves and generations of slaves but there was a higher power in there somewhere you know to, to other stories so I, I don't know i'm kind of a doubter it's more like show me but to deny that the possibility is there would be just to put on a blindfold you know which i'd never want to do so that's my answer <laughs> well said zoe i think i think that it's definitely a possibility because scientifically speaking, I mean, I think once again, like they're saying, it'd be stupid to think that we are the only thing that exists out there. I mean, there's the universe is huge and there's so much that we don't understand and so much that we haven't explored or begun to understand. So it's just hard to imagine that we are the only thing out there. I mean, I think it's a selfish idea to have. Now, I don't think that the Hollywood idea of aliens is remotely true. I doubt that they're these little green mm. things with the big heads and the big eyes. And 
I think that, you know, they could look exactly like us. They could look like any number of things that we have. They could look like a certain kind of animal or they could look like they, they could be trees. They could be anything. I mean, who knows what, what it is, but I think that the possibility that there is life is very high, including it could literally just be plants because those are living, you know, creatures as well. So there's something out there. I just don't know what it is. Uh, have we been visited by aliens before? I don't know. I don't know that I believe in, you know, the crop circle kind of thing or like I, I, that people have been abducted or any of that stuff. I think that that is a little bit too into the conspiracy theory world for me personally, but it's possible that there are other beings out there somewhere, or like Jake said, that they existed in the past or that they will exist in the future. Can I interject here for one second? Very well said, Zoe, about people that claim to have been abducted. 30 years ago or so, I worked in local television, public access television here in Los Angeles, actually in Pasadena. And it's community-based television. So people who lived within the area that a cable company provided for back then would have the right, total right to come in and produce a program, even if they knew nothing about it. So we, they had staff and I was part of that staff to facilitate those things. One of the women I worked with and one of the TV shows that was done there was all about abductions, people that had literally claimed to have been abducted, including the woman I worked with, one of the women I worked with for, and I worked with her for at least two years. And if in every other regard, she seemed perfectly normal, when it came to this, she talked about it as if it was perfectly normal. And then people that would come on this TV show all had their stories and they were all similar to what we've all heard a million times. Do I believe her? Do I think she was all there? That's questionable. She was responsible. She did a good job in, in her job, you know, but when it came to this story, she was talking about it as matter as matter of factly as going to a grocery store you know, bringing home some milk, her being abducted. And, um, and almost, you know, a lot of the stories were very similar, you know, now were these people crackpots just looking for attention or had a screw loose somewhere? I couldn't tell you, but there were plenty of people that had stories that were so similar to each other that you know, it does start breeding some similarity, like, you know, they couldn't all be lying or making this up. Um, but I'm still skeptical, even though I was there to see, to witness some of the shows, you know, some of these interviews firsthand. Um, yeah, who knows? You know, that is really fascinating. I mean, I, regardless, I think it'd be interesting to hear those stories, especially like firsthand with someone you worked with. I think, yeah, that would be very fascinating thing to hear whatever it may be whether it's psychological or it actually happened either way it's a very fascinating thing especially the similarities in the stories yeah well uh this was all pre-web i left there maybe in 92 or 93 i'd say that this all happened probably a year or two before that but uh it wouldn't be that hard to look up in fact maybe when we're done with this i will do that you know, I'll try to look up the woman I used to work with and see if there's anything online about her. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be that'd be awesome. Yeah, it'd be kind of cool. I'll send you links if I do. <laughs> yeah, totally. That would. That's fascinating. Yeah. Um, Ken, what are you, what are your thoughts about this? I think it's just been extremely well covered by everyone there. I can't say anything different, really. I mean, I agree, you know, that... Uh, out in the, in the universe somewhere, there are places, planets that have the conditions where life can possibly begin. You know, if there's a water on, a, on some globe somewhere and there's enough sufficient heat, then same thing could happen that happened here. And the same kind of evolution could, you know, could continue from that. And you never know where that might branch off. I mean, you know, the, 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 the we became human through a whole process of discarding 
uh, other creatures through uh, you know the history of life. So it could be people could be cabbages out there, creatures. I think I would see cabbages uh, with legs and uh, extremely intelligent uh, large plants. I think would be a kind of fun if they would visit us. If we could refrain from eating them, that would be the best thing, really. But you never know. But do you think they would look like triffids? No, I like cabbages. Uh, I don't know, cabbages or maybe carrots. They, like could, have, cabbages, they yeah. could have be carrots with rings on. They could come like, <laughs> you know, land and ring yeah, yeah. carrots. <laughs> Graph connotation right there. <laughs> no, you make the, there's endless possibilities, but of course it's a fascinating thing to think about. And it's certainly yeah, it's, I'm certain I'm, it's obviously very possible. And, uh, and you know, so hey, you know, uh, but I, I, I read a fascinating book by a guy who's like Norwegian or something. He wrote about uh, being visited by aliens, you know, and they he described them as just as we always see them as these kind of weird people with triangular faces. But they, they, they apparently visited him three or four times. He wrote this amazing book about it, you know. And I remember reading this about, I don't know, 50 years ago, and it's, I still remember it sounded absolutely real. It sounded so like such a documented version of spending time with aliens from somewhere else. So the guy probably was, uh, I think he's telling the truth, actually. I think it's very possible, you know, that they can just come down and, you know, have a little visit and go home again and decide they don't like it here. And once our planet is, you know, uninhabitable, which may not be long, then they might come and take it and start, you know, start over again. Yes, it all depends on, on how on how advanced the species in question is. So obviously, and I've heard a really um, good analogy for that is, um, for instance, when, when, when we're watching uh, wildlife, the animals that don't really understand that they're being watched by us. So if, if, a, if a species is so advanced that it doesn't want us to know that it's watching us, then it would be able to do that if it was advanced enough. Uh, yes. There are animals, speaking of forests and stuff, um, have you ever sighted a red fox or a fox at all? I mean, I've lived, I live on the edge of a forest now, but I've yeah. lived Yosemite National Park. I've lived in Lake Tahoe, so I, I've lived right in forest and stuff for yeah. days on and off. Certain animals, they know you're there, but you're never going to see them. You know, it's rare to see a mountain lion. It's even f more rare to see a fox. I've seen one. See, fox. Foxes around here all the time. Yeah, are they visible? Yeah. Are they still? Yeah, yeah. Oh. They'll they'll dash and dart. You'll catch a sight of them and. You know, they don't often stand still very much and, you know, let you, you know, spend a long time looking at them. But you can see them. They move in and out of the forest here and they chase after your cat. That's the part I don't like. Ah, well, yeah. Uh, we get uh, civilization, I guess. We get uh, <laughs> um, urban foxes here in the UK quite a lot. They normally come out uh, very late at night or in the early hours of the morning to scavenge. Yeah. And uh, they're, they're also yeah. very, very shy. Like, you know, if they spot you, they're off. I think I've seen one, one. I'm sure, I've been around others, but uh, you know, but maybe they're not as common here either. Yeah. And it was away from civilization. I mean, there would be no cats were up in the hills, but there's every other kind of wildlife. Of course, they like rabbits too. Yeah. So there was um my my dad was walking the dogs once in the early hours of the morning, and there was a fox following him. And then when he would look round, the fox would stop and freeze. And then as he walked, the fox followed again from a distance. Wow. Yeah. But my, most I mean, of the time, very that's, sharp. That's funny. The same thing happened. My, my girlfriend, my lady friend, she, she lives in a country setting. And she said there was a fox actually walking behind her in the same way. It would stop. She'd move. The stuff. Foxes are fascinating, I think. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But from my experience, they're very elusive, at least here on the west mm. coast of the U.S., you know. Mm. Wow, yeah. Well, it's very hard to get maybe from. they're a little bit more northerly. You might find more up in the northwest of the, your country that there. Be, that's probably why as well. Yeah. I used to hear a few um, vixen fox out in, in the... Uh, uh, when we used to have like very cold um 
fog outside. It would be foggy outside very early, like mid, you know, two, three or four in the morning or something. It's dead silent in the in the building, and you'd hear the most ungodly sounds from this fox. That it's really eerie. They do make weird noises. They make weird noises. Really yeah. Noises. And with the fog there outside and everything as well, it was just like it was like, like a horror movie scene. Or something. You just heard this disembodied sound and this panting and this, this screeching sounds. And I knew it was um, a mother fox probably probably calling for a mate or a child even because they go missing a lot. You know, they wander off. Hmm. We're so curious about humans, the little ones. And they will follow you. I've been followed by a little, a little um, fox before. Yeah, that's funny. Um, yeah. That got split from its parents, and it was curious with, about me and latched onto me, and always kept its distance, but did the same thing every time I turned around. It stopped still. When I moved on, you could hear it moving on, trotting after me. You know, um, yeah. So um, they make, have, yeah, they make really weird noises. Yeah, it's very chilly. Speaking of weird noises, do you have coyotes in England, Frank? I'm not sure you do. Do you, mm, no, no, do you have what? Sorry, Ken? coyotes. No. Coyotes. No, we don't. We don't have uh, those. We sure uh, have that, them that, here. That's an eerie I have, sound. I've heard really they call them. It's just frightening. It's very, yeah, scary sound. Yeah, they make horrible noises. And you yeah. rarely yeah. hear yeah. one, yeah. right? Without hearing the whole pack. You know, uh, oh, that, that's exciting to hear that. Yeah. Oh, when they're all howling at the same time. Yeah, God, that's a cacophony, that is. Yeah. It might seem strange, but if you're anywhere in the foothills areas around here or more forested, even than the flatlands of the San Fernando Valley, but if it's a more forested area, coyotes oh. are common. We, I see coyotes here almost daily, you know, and usually some somewhere between dusk and dawn, you know, but sometimes oh, yeah. I'll see one walking down our street at eight o'clock in the morning, like it's just... <laughs> You know, out for a yeah. second. Do you get wild dogs over there as well? They talk about wild dogs, mm -hmm. uh, feral dogs out there or something. That oh, are very vicious, apparently. A dog that might have rabies and hopefully yeah. not, you know. Yeah. They're, they're, they're a force to be reckoned with, I think. You keep well clear of them. <laughs> Why? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but th this has been super fun, I think. I've, I've enjoyed it. I hope you have. Yeah, yeah, it has been very interesting. And sorry for coming in late, but thanks for having cool. me. Glad I didn't miss it entirely. You're welcome. Ah, you are. Um, <laughs> great seeing you all. You know, it's obviously, been too long. It's the first time it's we're been meeting. been a while, isn't it? Oh, it's you were, what, 18 yeah. last time I saw you, probably. You know, <laughs> been about three yeah. months, right? Or <laughs> the festival, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, it was the festival. Right. 2018, wasn't it? 2018 first. Yes. And Jake as well, you've yeah. been hair grow since the last time I saw Locked, you. Locked down here. <laughs> Frank, I, I swear I thought you were younger. I'm not saying this to flatter you. I really thought you were younger than me by a good 10 years, you know, and now I just find out you're. Um, well, and I, I'll, I'll let you in on a secret. I'm 52 in June. 52? I thought you said you were born in 49. No, He's I'm lying. lying. Frank, <laughs> come on now, man. See how gold. <laughs> Bloody good Botox, uh, Steve. I'm, I'm yeah. by far the oldest person here. Yeah, and I'm sure then I'm second, you know. Blake, hey, how old are you again? Uh, 69 on March 8th. Oh, hell yes. You're just 10 years younger than me. Yeah. You look pretty yeah. young yourself, as far, as far as I can see. <laughs> Appreciate that, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Feels pretty good to get older and still feel good about yourselves. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> So you got you know, a ponytail going there? Yeah, you better have. Oh, yeah. This comes in very handy. Yeah, I'll bet. I, I haven't cut it for about yeah. three years. Every He's time I get a job, I say, you get me, you get my hair. You know, that's the way yeah. it is. Well, that's good. <laughs> yeah. I just don't go with the way. If, if they want me to look different than I look now, I'm pretty much not going to take it, you know. Yeah, you know, we don't have to do that anymore. Yeah, depends on the offer, I suppose. But I, guess I haven't happens. had an offer that was worth cutting my hair for in a long time. So I haven't had I an offer. I, I used to play so many suit parts. I'm so happy now that I don't do that anymore. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Hey, well, I've definitely enjoyed watching you through the years, you know. Um, Thanks. One of many of your jobs, right? One of many. 
you know. Oh yeah, absolutely, yeah, yeah. That was one of my favorites, though. Absolutely, playing Wendell Merrill. That was uh, still uh, is in my mind one of my most interesting and fascinating characters to have to play. Well, that's good to hear. Yeah. Yeah, at least, uh, you know, I'm sure we all attest how unique it was working with David Lynch, you know. Yeah, and I, as I was saying to Frank, he only directed the last episode I was in. Uh, up till then, it was, uh, I mean, I didn't even meet him until the second episode. Huh. I got hired quite by chance. It was really fun. Because my ex-wife was a friend of uh, Bob Engels, and uh, I was out in L.A. doing a... TV movie, and uh, she called and said, Kenny, why don't you call Bob Engels? You're doing this new series. Uh, and so I called him, and Bob said, Ken, funny you should call. There's this great role on, on this uh, Twin Peaks series. You'd be right for it. Come on out to the studio. Just like that. Boom. David wasn't there. I met, you know, um, uh, uh, Mark. Yeah. And a few other people, that was that. And then I just had a ball with it the rest of the way. Mm -hmm. Fun. And David, you know, directed the last one where it all went, you know, behind the curtain there. That was, uh, that was a pretty crazy time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, it was one of my favorites, anyways, for sure. Absolutely. Very fun. How, diff how difficult? Well, I've got a question for you, Ken, while we're on it. Um, uh, how difficult was it to learn how to talk backwards in that in the log scenes? Uh, fairly Coach difficult, school. but we had, you know, um, uh, uh, Mike. You know, uh, he was uh, he did apparently he and David had been friends a long time. And in, when he was like in high school, that was one of his hobbies, talking backwards. You're kidding. So he, he coached us on especially. The difficult part, obviously, is the diphthongs. You know, you think you've got it, then you really have to examine a diphthong backwards. It's quite difficult to work it out, you know. Like when you say the words, let's like, say sound, you have to start with the ooh, and somehow go, I go through like three different vowel sounds backwards to get the right sound of the word. It was fun to, though, to hear the final result. My favorite part of it was, you know, I was living up here and, uh, I did my uh, recording session with David over the phone. Huh. And uh, we were going back and forth. And I recorded it on my little cassette player, right? And I kept that tape in my drawer. Now, the odd part, this, this is where the aliens come in, people. I looked for that tape uh, about a year later. It was gone. I could never, ever find that tape again. Mm. Isn't that bizarre? Wow. Yes. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> probably under the ground it's probably in the carrot patch as far as i know <laughs> could be anywhere anyway <laughs> yeah that was uh it was kind of i didn't have that much to do backwards but obviously kyle did and other people i mean i only had to say a few things like uh, what was it uh oh god uh he just had to say his name backwards a couple of times that might be it but yeah it was uh, definitely a lot of fun i'll tell you that <laughs> wow okay that was, that was a really good that was really good in the in the log the live really did enjoy the log scenes it was so strange and mm. tense and oh yeah you know, that, that, wonderfully so, done so weird <laughs> yeah. david was a lot of fun i mean you, you go, guys obviously worked with him i mean he's so so kind of actors as i recall yeah, you yeah. know really you know like oh that was great these actors are great let's <laughs> fuck you know and all the time, very supportive. And, you know, I loved the way he would suddenly change a line, change the whole, you know, like when I had to do, uh, I still remember the one where it was the famous, like, uh, tw uh, 12 Rainbow Trout. It, it was a totally different line. And he said, uh, Wyndham, uh, just forget whatever's written there and just say this. Now say, uh, oh, look, Turner, smash your face into the truck window and say, oh, look, 10 Rainbow Trout. <laughs> that was that, you know. Yeah. It just it was fun going along with his whims, it's really and he was an amazing guy, as you all know. Yeah. Yeah. Well that's enough that was, that. Was, that was, <laughs> through the years with the fan base that this show has, have you gone to the Comic Con shows and things like that? I was in London last year. I was in LA some years ago. I was up in uh, Washington State. I've gone three times. 
Yeah. And there's this lovely lady called Lindsay Bowden in London who yeah. Yeah. organized it last year. Just a terrific, terrific person. And uh, my lady and I went over there and we had such a good time, you know, meeting all these people and, you know, so such enthusiasm and fun. You know what my one of my favorites was? I was signing away, signing photographs, and somebody said, "Hey, Kenny, um, there's this." Ba-. I said, "What's that band out there?" It's like a rock band, and they said, "Well, uh, those are the Wyndham Earls." I said, "What?" <laughs> <laughs> I went out, and these guys were playing, and I I just couldn't help myself. I just started dancing, dancing, dancing in front. Oh, it was such ex- such an exciting uh, time. Wow. Uh, I really enjoyed that, but apparently there will be no more of them. That's too bad. Yeah, the uh, yeah, CBS is. clamped down on it. They yeah. It yeah, licensing. Yeah. That's a terrible sadness to me because it's not only the the, the UK one; it's also the American one. Yeah, Every no, it's ninety three. It's crazy. That's too bad. Yeah, that really. long one, the American, just like that. So, everyone, yeah. everyone who takes part, everyone who came. Well, everyone is just so happy and so much fun, and people come dressed dressed in weird costumes and with strange makeup on, and oh, the just laughing. Are amazing, and, you know. The creativity was, that of the fans and the way they. Oh, the I just lo- I just loved it. I every loved every it single so time, it never ceases to impress me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's always so, something as well, like some things you you should never expect. Like someone was like, dressed as cherry pie, but they it had like <laughs> jam <laughs> and everything <laughs> dripping off, like really. <laughs> Real dedication, just oh to like cherry God, pie. Yeah. <laughs> Anything you can think of that's Twin Peaks. There, there's this lady that, that, that she's a real character. I think she, I think she went to every UK fest. This lady, she was a, a wonderfully eccentric, and she always used to go as something that no one would think of dressing yeah. up as, you know, the most random thing. And she went one one time as a ceiling fan, and she had like the propellers <laughs> at the top of her head <laughs> and all that. <laughs> Unbelievable! <laughs> um, Incredible. Great. She she was amazing. It was all homemade, you know, all put together with it, you know, just got the hat on with like these the, the fan wow. propellers on the top, you know, going and rotating around. <laughs> Guess what? One of my favorites was the woman the woman who came dressed you know, in the horse outfit. That was that was really cool. One person. Yeah. <laughs> she was the entire horse. <laughs> Ah. Horse, that's, um, <laughs> they've come as uh, chess pieces, which is a connection to you to Wyndham's yeah. character. There was there was there was actually a chess piece um, uh, prop uh, at one of the fests, and you could actually go inside the back of it, oh. and there would be a, a hole in it, and you could stick your head out and like gurn and stuff, you know, make funny faces and oh, fun. these okay. auto ops inside this this uh, this um, chess piece, giant chess piece. It was really good. It was strange me to this. I'm just trying to learn chess now i never played it before anybody oh. there is anybody there a good chess player no i can't hey. I, I haven't got a clue about chess any any of you guys good at chess no <laughs> i but after watching the queen's gambit i mean oh yeah it's really, really uh, great show or series well my girlfriend likes she's played quite a bit and she's trying to teach me i said you know, give me five years. And she, yeah, that's about right, you know. So in the meantime, I just let her beat me and I tried this crazy moves all the time. And she beats me in that and she beats Scrabble, you know. But hey, chess can be fun, I think. Chess is something really we should all learn. Especially as older people, it's good for our brains, I think. And, um, Some, yeah, there's an awful lot involved in it, a lot of strategy and stuff like that, isn't it? And, yeah, trying to work out what your opponent's going to do next and all that kind of thing. Exactly, exactly. A lot to it. Yeah, you have to look in all directions at once before you make a move. Yeah. Cool. Absolutely. Hey, listen. Okay. Here, but he's vanished again. Uh, um, Oops, my battery's low. That's why I'm on low well, battery, right, low power mode. Oh, yeah. There we go. Great. Well, we're going to wrap up anyway, Ken. So hopefully you'll be here until we say goodbye. Yeah. Um, yeah. Before we do, just very quickly, though, I'd like to ask you guys, how have you been keeping yourself creatively busy or um, have you found any new hobbies and interests during this COVID period? What have you, have you been working on any new projects? Just uh, YouTube videos, dubbing parodies and uh, stuff like oh, that. Yeah. Well, mm. for me, I've been writing and recording covering other people's songs but it's been about music and 
I don't know, I was telling Frank, I fell in with these folks uh, that have a show in Australia called the Sonny Michaels Show. And I've appeared on it for the last two months uh, playing original music and then in a couple of their skits. And I'll be on again this April 24th. So that's the Sonny Michaels Show, cool. uh, which originates in Brisbane, Australia. Right. So, uh, the power of the Internet. It's amazing. You know? It's awesome. Yeah, yeah, it's great. We can all connect from miles and miles apart. You know, it's uh, yeah, yeah, unbelievable. Really, um, we're all we're you know we're all over the place here. You know, yeah. I've got, got Ken there in in, in Ontario. Um, we've got uh, Zoe and uh, um, Stu in LA. Oh, you're in LA now, Zoe? Yeah. Oh, in LA, are you? sorry. Yeah, I know you're from yeah. the neighborhood, right? Or that area? Yeah, I, I moved a really long time ago, like 2016, 2016, I moved, but um, so before the show even came out, but I still frequent there. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Very good to know. And we've got Jake in, and, well, an outside London now, um, and myself in, within London. Kind of on the border. Yeah. I'm in the suburbs, kind of thing. But, um, yeah, we are we are universal on this show, without a doubt. Yeah, it's amazing. Um, but uh, I have, uh, sorry, I was going to ask. I think Jake touched upon it, but I was going to ask Zoe and ask Zoe and then Ken. What um, any projects coming your way or anything you might be working on now? I don't have a ginger beard. Eh? You want a coffee or ginger beer? Ginger beer, maybe this time. Oh, what was that, Frank? <laughs> I'd like a ginger beer. Can you get me one as well, Ken? Please. Yeah, yeah. I'd like. I could. Uh, yeah, I can mail it to you. <laughs> yeah, that would do. That's great. Yeah, send it by carrier pigeon. Flash. Yeah. Um, yeah. It'll probably get here in 2022. Maybe the COVID thing will be over by then as well. Who knows? Maybe. Let's I'm hope so. Optimistic. Being optimistic. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Um. <laughs> yeah, Ken, what, do you, what, do you, uh, what, what are you are you working on anything at the moment, Ken? Any, any anything coming through for you? Because I think they're starting to slowly open up. Uh, uh, well, I mean, the, the two episodes of the Charm, like but you know, I did that, and uh, you know, I'm just reading, and I, my life is just the same as always. I stay home occasionally. I get a call for work, and uh, that's about it. And I've been practicing my trumpet and my flute a lot oh. during this time as well. Uh, doing amusing videos for friends on Facebook, that kind of thing. Oh, I've seen those. They're great, yeah. <laughs> trumpet and flute, that's kind of unusual. I know. I started out playing the trumpet when I was like 13. I fell in love with it. Yeah. And then I kind of became more interested in acting. And I've been picking it up off and on over years. But I was working in Minneapolis one time at the Gusset Theater. And I was staying in a hotel, I was directing under Milkwood. And... Uh, I thought, my trumpet's too loud. I better take up something quieter. So I decided to take up the flute. I, I don't know. I was about 36 or something. And uh, I talked to the guy that was, you know, the flute player in the band at the Guthrie. Gave me one lesson. He said, there you go, Ken. Here's the fingering. Uh, here's the notes. Go for it. And I've just been practicing ever since, you know. So my favorite uh, time is when I played with Pat Matheny. But that's another story. I won't tell you that right now. Okay, well, quite by, quite by accident, quite I know. By accident. That one. played with Pat it was, Matheny. It was quite by accident, yes. It was New Year's Eve 1985 or something. Wow. Yeah. Was it his band? I mean, Lyle Mays on... No, 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 no. This was at a party. I don't have to hate dropping names, but I was doing a play with Lenny Flow. It's called The Real Thing. Okay. It was new. She said, Kenny, what are you doing? I said, oh, nothing. She said, well, come on. This is party at Bobby Duval's. I said, oh, yeah, yeah, a bunch of stars and shit. She said, no, 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 no. It's just, it's family. She said, bring your instruments. And uh, it's all about just having fun. And he likes to have music there and everything. So I went and I, I met this, uh, there was a guy playing the piano, playing kind of bluesy thing. And I took my flute out and started playing, sort of, you know, just playing blues in, in a C or blues in F or something. And there was this guy in the corner playing the guitar. It's kind of like, oh, yeah, this guy's pretty cool. And, uh, I went to get a glass of wine, and uh, somebody said, oh, hey, Ken, Pat's really enjoying playing with you guys. I said, Pat? Who's Pat? 
She said, that's Pat Metheny you're playing with. And at that time, he was, I don't know, his early 20s still, I think. I and so I went, I went back for more. If I'd known initially it was him, I would never have started. But nah. once you're in it, I'm, I said, this is a once in a lifetime thing. I'm going to go back and play some more. It's just, a, you know, simple blues. But he was so, I mean, you know, he just said, you guys are so much fun to play with. I said, uh, well, thank you. <laughs> you know, let me just I mean, I, let these folks know if you don't already. Pat Metheny has been one of the premier jazz guitar players for the last 40 years. That's right. Since the early 80s. At least 40 years. Yeah. yeah. 1980, 79. Yeah. Right. And if you're familiar with Jaco Pistorius, who was a really renowned bass player, his first record was with Pat Metheny. Um, Jaco went on to other things and died young. But yes, unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. I saw there you Pat go. Metheny towards the late 90s with his band, and I was blown away. I yeah. mean, that yeah. phenomenal. So, hell. Yeah. <laughs> so that was a particularly special moment that just happened out of nowhere. And I just love talking about it because it was a great experience for that night. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And so, what, what about yourself? Have you been keeping yourself busy? Yeah, I mean, I've been trying to. I, um, I still have uh, YouTube projects planned. And um, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm trying to exercise and stay healthy and keep myself entertained as well. But I mean, as far as actual projects, I've been still planning to do YouTube videos. I've not actually posted anything yet, but I will at some point. <laughs> it, it takes time. It's, uh, it's harder than it looks. More cool. Yeah. More goes into it than you than uh, people realize. Exactly. Yeah. I'd love to be uh, upload more often, but um, like I get into one and it's like, oh, actually, I need to do this and that. I've got a planet and this and that. And this and... But um, you'll get there eventually. Yeah. Just keep, yeah. Just keep at it. Just keep keep at it. Keep the ideas flowing. Yeah. Oh. Keeping the brain active is the, the, the key, isn't it, really? Otherwise, you know, with all these troubles, you know, it could be easy to sort of sink, you know, if you haven't got your brain occupied, you know, keep being creative and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah my phone, anyway. okay, my phone, my phone's dying on me, my dears. I got to go now. Right. Okay, well, great making your acquaintance. It's been well, fun being part well, of this little group. Thank you, Frank. It's Thank lovely, you, everybody. Lovely, great to see you. Lovely to see you, Ken. It really, it really is. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, nice work, Frank. <laughs> <laughs> hey, by the way, speaking of good scores, John Puricello, who's been on your show as many times yeah. as I have, I suppose. Have you seen him in Godzilla versus Kong or whatever that? I didn't know he was in that. My boyfriend was just watching that last night when I was sleeping. <laughs> I mean, was in that. Yeah, John's got a nice part in it. Now, I got to tell you the truth i only watched maybe the first half hour 40 minutes and that i probably will never watch the rest of it <laughs> just not my cup of tea but there's puricello you know i mean you know yeah. officer chad or deputy chad whatever he has been showing up in one thing after another since chad but that's yeah. got a pretty big paycheck i imagine godzilla versus gong you know there's something that that, that for a big production like that god yeah it must be yeah yeah i mean oh, that's the okay. huge production. Yeah. yeah but he's in it and he's good you know <laughs> as always but, yeah i've not been i've never been into like big big blockbuster action films you know like little superhero films but you know so anything like that really doesn't really do it for me you know Meaning, um, I'm right there with you. In fact, you know, yeah, that's just being honest. You know, Plus, um, Disney Plus, that's most of what their movies are. Um, yeah. HBO Max, the last couple things that they've put on, Justice League or whatever. Just, I don't know. I'm sorry, Wonder Woman. I'm just not into those movies. But I'll the end only, up watching thing I saw to me that was kind of like a huge spectacle on the big screen that was kind of very big budget stuff was, um, the Hobbit, um, you know, Lord of the Rings uh, story. Yeah. Um, that's the only kind of like big fantastical thing I've watched on, on 
in the cinema, you know? Well, last year, you know, being at home, if you have, if you've signed up for some of these subscription services, they've all had movie premieres that are, you know, yeah. supposedly in theaters at the same time. So, and I mean, some of them have been great, you know, it's nice to be able to sit home and watch a brand new movie that you'd otherwise oh, yeah. have to go see in a theater or go to a screen yeah, yeah, yeah. of maybe, um, you know, a couple things I worked on were the little things that was out just now that was on HBO max for a little while. Not that I did anything, you know, I mean, these are just things I show up for a day and I'm in a scene and done, you know, one and done most of the time. You know, Macbeth should be coming out in a while. I did work a few days on that. Wow. And Denzel Washington is playing Macbeth. Francis McDormand is Lady Macbeth. And oh, interesting. Yeah. And directed by Joel Cohen, you know, the Cohen brothers. Oh, yeah, and yeah. The second time I got to work with him. And I got to say, I like working with him as much as David Lynch or somebody, although Lynch has yeah. given me a lot more to do. But he's just so cool to be around, you know, just to be on a set with a lot of positive energy and mm. his wife too, Frances McDormand, uh, she goes out of her way to do things that are just, you know, she, she does them without thought. Most actors or somebody with that much thing would like to stay away from half the things she I've seen her do, mm. you know, just being nice, you know, or yeah. Getting, and regardless of whose job it might be, you know. Yeah, yeah. Anyway. Oh, yeah. Uh, I had a moment in the SpongeBob movie, but you'd really have to free <laughs> and rewind and rewind. That's how I found it. <laughs> Is anybody, that's another one. You know, Paramount Plus just uh, launched here as like a new, you know, subscription pay per view service or pay service, not pay per view. And their big opening thing was this new SpongeBob movie. And I got to work a couple days on that or several days, I guess, like back in early 2019. So just over two years ago. And uh, there's one section that's, you know, that's with real people, you know, that's live. And we played zombies, uh, zombie cowboy pirate combination of all three <laughs> so that was a lot of fun and uh danny trejo was there for a day snoop dogg was there for a day or two oh, snoop dogg, wow. <laughs> yeah and, and got to work with a really great dance group you know uh highly choreographed so if you see that movie that one little section was that was a lot of fun and it was filmed on the set of deadwood by the way out in uh, new hall if you're familiar with it the Melody Ranch, which is like this old Western ranch from the earliest days of Hollywood stuff, you know. Oh, that's so cool. Amazing. That must have that's been a great. lot of fun. Yeah, it was. It was fun, you know. It's amazing that they, you can go from, in the world of acting or, you know, supporting artists, that you can go from being like a dirty bearded uh, woodsman to working with Spunk, SpongeBob. Yeah. Yes. And, and how often can you say that? You know, yeah. Right. And you know what? I mean, my look was pretty similar in both, you know, really? uh, without the, you know, without all the excessive <laughs> makeup instead of that, it was, you know, as a dead person, basically. <laughs> but, uh, but working with those miniatures, they would bring in like uh, it was just two characters, SpongeBob and Patrick. And they <laughs> would, like put them, they would, you know, kind of almost almost mathematically work out these camera angles and shots but you would have these two miniatures that could be for some shots they might be that high you know like three or four inches other shots they were maybe this big so they had them to choose from but you're always playing into the eyes of those miniatures so they're like you know you're looking at them as the camera's looking back at you and that was uh, it was a good learning experience, you know, see how animation is done, you know, or with live action, you know. And then we all I don't know, you'll see that if you do bother to see the movie and I wouldn't say don't look for me because you won't find me. But um, that's, you know, that was a fun thing to work on. That's all I can tell you, you know. And again, I don't know. When you're doing background, and that's almost all I ever do, it's more like just being a fly on the wall. So the more interesting the wall is, you know, or the stuff off the wall, 
and that was certainly a good one. Yeah, so. it's fun though because it, you can get to see so so much variety when you do stuff like that. Can't oh, you? Yeah. you know. You know, it was kind of cool. the last time I'd seen Danny Trejo was at uh, Albuquerque Comic Con, where I went with Christian Calloway and Robert Broski as, you know, the three woodsmen. And Danny Trejo was probably the biggest deal there that weekend. You know, who Danny Trejo is, right? Are you familiar yes. with him? Uh, he's kind of a household name here in the States, you know, and he's a valley boy. He grew up right here, you know. Um, but anyway, then the next time I saw him was on the set of SpongeBob, where in Albuquerque, we were, even though he's a celebrity and got, you know, thousands of people lined up for his picture and, you know, a selfie, we were more on an equal footing, you know, and then to work with him on set, you know, and you're just doing background. But anyway, he's he's a hell of a guy and a great humanitarian, by the way. But I'll let you look all that up and I'll shut up now. So go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> interesting though very interesting yeah so have you have you guys um sorry and um jake um have you found yourself you know during lockdown which a lot of people do sometimes find themselves getting different interests than they might have had before covid like when you because we've got a bit more time on our hands i suppose in a sense um did you find yourself um uh, um finding different leisurely pursuits or new hobbies or things like that? No, I just kind of did what I did before, just deeper, went deeper into my existing interests. Yeah. Yeah, I feel the same. I mean, I feel like if anything, getting back in touch with things that used to be important to me that, you know, life got in the way of mm -hmm. and time, you know, took me away from. And I feel like I like making YouTube content. I started making YouTube videos when I was like 14. A uh, really long time ago, and so I, I hadn't done it in a really long time, and I just decided this year, you know, why not try again? It's something I thought about for a very long time, and it always been like, oh, I, I should make videos again. Like I should do that again. Like that was something that was important to me. That was something that was meaningful to me, and I just never got around to doing it. And this year, well, last year technically, 2020, I actually started creating again, and that was really meaningful to me so you have a, what's the name of your youtube channel is it just under your name or something or yeah it's uh zoe mclean 521 but i think i might be creating a new channel because that channel has been inactive for five or six years so oh, i really? think i might when i post the videos i'm working on i might start fresh which is actually probably scarier than going back because i'll have nothing <laughs> i'll have i'll have to be building it all up again um yeah. but it is equally scary to go back to a channel that's inactive and I don't know who's even still going to watch anything I make. And I think so I've had a YouTube why. channel for maybe 10 years. I think I have about 11 followers. So less than one a year, maybe. <laughs> You'd be surprised though. I mean, um, there's been times where I've gone really long periods without uploading them. I've, I've had my channel since 2007 and I won't upload for ages. And then all of a sudden I finally upload and they'll be like, oh yeah, he's back. So yeah, yeah. you never know. <laughs> some people That's would good. be happy to yeah. see you back. You have some great stuff up there, no doubt. You know, I mean, I've seen some of your things and they're Thanks. clever. I mean, you should have a good <laughs> following. Thanks. But the recent ones that you've done, Jake, you know, doing the, the, the accent, the, you know, dubbing, overdubbing the accents and stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Dubbing yeah. parodies. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, on that same subject, I've taken uh, or watched a lot of uh, tutorials. Um, a lot of them coming from the union, from SAG-AFTRA, everything from building a website. And, I, and I've followed through on all these things. So my website is stuartstrauss.net. And it's not the website I had a couple of years ago. That one's history, which someone else built for me. But this was built through Weebly.com, which is a free website building. Yeah, yeah. Pretty cool. So that was a class um, I've taken. Now, I've worked as a video editor way back when, starting when I worked in local TV. But I took a Final Cut Pro class. Um I've taking, taken a self-taping 
um, program for auditions and that sort of thing, which turned me on to um, other things like using an app on my phone, which we can all use, but you have to pay for it, called Filmic Pro that turns your mobile phone in, or gives your mobile phone the same controls that a studio camera has. So it really broadens the range. Mm. Um, I've bought a microphone. Part of this is to do these videos for the Sonny Michaels show, but it was just kind of a way in the door. So, you know, the self-taping education there, the Final Cut Pro for, for editing all these things. I've found that, well, things that we've already known but I didn't always take advantage of every time you've got a question, anything confuses me about any program I'm ever using. I'll just type it in to a Google or, you know, web search. And sure enough, there'll be three answers that come up in three seconds that, you know, go watch this for five minutes. And there's the answer you were looking for or a technique or a way to do something. So I've been pretty active throughout throughout the pandemic probably yeah. once every couple weeks on average i've sat through some sort of a class you know to help further myself self-help things whatever but again largely through uh the sag foundation and sag after two different things within sag basically and um Oh, you know, like I say, that's that's been most of it. Uh, I think I've gotten a whole lot better as an engineer. So everything that I do is like most of us during the pandemic has been totally self-produced. So every instrument on my demos, every vocal, everything you hear is me. Then if I've turned it into a video, I've also shot it myself then edited myself in Final Cut Pro, um, you know. So, yeah, a lot of that's happening that if you asked a year ago, none of this was going on. You know, I yeah. hardly ever sang and played at the same time, you know, and now I do it daily, you know, and I'm thinking, yeah. I'm, and as soon as I finish something, I'm thinking about what the next thing is going to be. You know, just as far as music, you know, like I'm ready to, I'm going to start tracking probably today or tomorrow. Uh, old Jeff Beck classic, in fact, Beck Spolero, written by Jimmy Page, uh, goes back to the late 60s. But, you know, so do I. So, <laughs> you know, and beyond. <laughs> but that's kind of my next project. And it's a, it's a three minute instrumental, you know. But anyway, uh, that's probably record and i'll start you know right. you can keep yourself ready i try i try and hard and this is hardly without ever getting out of my general area i haven't been out socially or anything like that you know maybe once in the last year i showed up at a gallery not that long ago that was doing like a david lynch fan art thing uh yeah. locally here in south pasadena and I went down with uh, one of the artists, Ryan Carr, if you're familiar with him. Um, but anyway, I was there for half hour. And that's been the extent of my social activities in the last, you know. Yeah. So. Yeah. I am fully immunized, though, by the way, you know. Oh, both. Both. So got both of those shots. Great stuff. Yeah, here we've only got that we've had the one so far. You have to wait for the second one. You know? Yeah, mom's getting her second uh, this month. Mom's oh, good. Second next month. A bit longer over here to wait compared to other places, you know. It, or the, is the vaccine still in very short supply there? Well, it's it's doing well here, in, um, compared to mainland Europe. we we're, we're doing well. That's good. Yeah, yeah. they're talking about you know. know uh, been vaccinated yeah is it political over there i mean here for the last you know five years everything has been political mm. and we're certainly wearing a mask if you wear yeah if you're a trump supporter or a republican you don't wear a mask you don't want to be 
separated, you know, whereas if you're just a normal person, of course you do, you know, <laughs> but uh, yeah, politics plays such a big part here. It's stupid, yeah, way beyond yeah. stupid. But. Well, I'd like to thank all of you for joining me here. It's just been good fun, you know. All right, thank um, you. Yeah, learning new things about you all as well, which is always good, which is what this show is about, really, to do something a bit different, you know. Um, um, so let's thank, in his absence, Ken Welch. It was lovely seeing him. Um, so thank you, Ken. Um, thank you, Stu. Thank you, Zoe. And thank you very much, Jake, for all you've done and helping me out with, with these things. Um, much appreciated. And we will uh, see you um, on the next Lodge Lockdown, wherever, whenever that might be, very soon indeed. Until then, au revoir. Take care, everyone. Bye. All righty. Thank you. Great seeing you all.